Welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Heretic Studios and myself, Toko. Uh, during this tutorial, I'll be talking about different selection methods, mainly due to the fact that during my transparency, transparency or blending tutorial, people were asking why I didn't show the stage in which I cut the image out. In truth, I figured it would be boring to everyone, and that's why I cut it out. Uh, I used the pen tool to cut that image up personally, but I'll just show you guys a few selection methods that I use or have experimented with in the past. So first, let's open the image we're going to work with. I'll just drag this one in. Load, and here it is. Early Dignation photo. I'm going to reset the image size to a more workable size roughly 600 let me drag this down uh, tip real quick is to increase the sizes faster than well not faster but instead of typing in and just playing around you can click and drag on the words basically of any box like that or you can hold control over and click over the text box like for instance if I went to 650 and I was at oh, one, which would be a really unrealistic change unless you were doing something like canvas size. You could hold shift, which would cause it to move in higher increments to 600. Well, I went over and I keep going over. And same thing with uh, just holding regular. Well, if I hold down alt or option, it will cause it to move in smaller increments. So I got 600 by 450. Hit OK. I'm going to fit this to the screen. I'm going to move this over. Uh, another way to quick fit to a screen is just double click your drag tool over here. Anyway, and the first selection method will be one that's specific to CS3 and it's the quick selection tool. Uh, it's located in the spot where the magic wand usually is, hotkey W. And this tool has been overlooked since the release of CS3 and I feel it's a really great tool and it isn't really used as much as it should be. The whole concept behind it is you drag it over the area you want selected say his shirt, Kevin's shirt, I'll drag it over the area and it selects till it finds an edge. Now I suggest you always have auto enhance on too because basically that's a auto make my selection better tool. It renders down and really gets to the edge. And if I want to add some more I'll just drag onto it and as you can see it after it renders through it's selected and it's done a pretty good job a really good job at selecting out Kevin so if I wanted to continue you just click but say say when I was selecting I went to the left or the right <laughs> as you can see it's selected the area that I don't want to be selected you just hold alt or option and just drag over that area Or in this case, you could have just hit undo. But if you're trying to get smaller details, like right in between there, if it's selecting the wrong area, or the top, possibly, of the computer, no, it's fine. You would use that. And to cover the wider areas, of course, you would use a larger brush, hotkey right bracket key, smaller brush, hotkey left bracket key. So. That's the first tool that I'm going to start with, and it's one I highly recommend. For quick selections, it's really easy and it's really fast. And actually, before I go to another tool, a quick tip is the Refine Edge, which more or less does what it says it will. Uh, it refines the edge of the selection. Uh, say you don't want to smooth, but you can just contrast the selection area, feather it a little bit if you want to or increase or expand or contract your selection. I'm going to cancel out of that. And the next one will be well, it would be the magic wand tool, but I really 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 don't suggest that tool. It just is not a very good tool unless you're looking for a solid color. So let's move to the polygonal lasso tool. You could use the lasso tool, but 
it takes a really steady hand or a good tablet and still a steady hand with that. So I'm just going to skip straight to the polygonal lasso tool, which lets you plot points and create shapes as so. And this is great, but there is one big downfall, which is you can't leave your selection, maybe correct a level or set some contrast, and then come back to the selection. You actually, you simply must close your selection, deselect, go do what you want to, and restart your selection, which you might not want to, or, well, odds are you don't want to. And the only selection method that I know of, and I've been using this tool since Photoshop 6, is the pen tool. Now, often this is used to create objects, or vector layers in Photoshop. Now, you can set it to selection mode, or pass mode, and it allows you to create paths around objects and convert them to selections, objects, etc. I use it a lot of rendering. I select nearly everything or cut nearly everything out with the pen tool as, long, as well as drawing vector objects because Illustrator turns me into an idiot because I had no idea how to use it. <laughs> so, the pen tool is really simple, but at the same time it can be very confusing. As you can see, I'm just simply plotting out points. I can also curve with the pen tool by holding and modifying the handles. Or I could also hold control and it is brings up the point selection tool and you can modify the handles as you can see. You can also move your path points in your path around just by holding the same hotkey and going over them. Now you could continue all the way around your image if I had and I would if I had time but as said that would be pretty boring I'm just introducing the methods but you could continue selecting and if you don't want the handle you can hold option or alt click on the point and it deletes the handle for your next selection so it could just be straight instead of curved off the other handle now to complete it you would simply go around which you could go around the outside of your image and then click on the beginning mark or beginning uh, point and it closes the path. You can now make a selection, fill the path, or stroke the path. For rendering, you would want to make the selection, make sure you have anti aliasing checked, and if you want, you could feather it by about maybe 0.2 to 0.5 pixels. You don't want a big feather because that really makes the cut look a little odd. And from there, you could simply select the inverse, which is what you would probably do for the full cut, and then you would just delete the background. So that's pretty much it for this guide on cutting out objects that have a solid background. Uh, my suggestion for anyone, beginner or professional, would be to use the quick selection tool first. I mean, at least give it a try. It's new in Photoshop CS3, and it's an excellent selection tool. And after that, or first most in my opinion, use the pen tool. You can carve and select your objects easily, fast, and allows you to stop in the middle of your selection, go, select something else, edit the levels, etc., and then go right back to editing your path, which is really useful. So that has been it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I've had a lot more free time recently, I know I said that before, but I've also got a lot more people helping me out, and hopefully we'll be able to write some more of these guides, and put them back up, put them up for you guys. Keep watching, and see you later.